talking tunes, and it's time for our weekly installment of Dougie What's His Head. They're, they're talking about now offering like new run movies for ten bucks a shot or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we could. This is a deal. I'm sure we could get. We should record your uh, your book club. That's probably quite entertaining. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Yes. You'd, you'd have to. You'd have to. They'd be rating that one. Uh, Sometimes the language gets pretty rough. Yeah, yeah. In the book club. <laughs> you know how Eric is. How many people are in your book club anyway? I forget. It's, it's like, I we, mean, I'm, I'm included in it, even though I'm like, you know, 200 yeah, miles, 100 I, miles away. But anyway. We can get we can get quite a bit there. You know, I think we, let's see, Corey always goes, I go, Kara, Kara goes, Eric goes, Dad goes, Mike and Shelly usually go, Orland Jim. You know, so we probably get a good eight to twelve people, depending. It's just, you know, it just amazes me that uh, knowing knowing the Heinz family back in the early days that you guys all read books. It just amazes me. Well, let's you know, I wouldn't go that far. Some of us just watch the movie, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a debate which is better. Right, right. So, which is kind of hard to do when if you don't watch the if you don't read the book and just watch the movie. But anyway, just watch the movie. So when you pick a book, you got to be careful because if it's a movie, and some of them, you know, like uh, you've seen Brad Pitt's World War Z. I didn't watch it. No. Okay, it's not like I've read that and I've watched the movie, and I think they're both really good. But the book has element, or the movie has elements of the book, but it's not like the book at all. Okay. You know. So um, that would really but, get you caught if you were you were doing this for an assignment in school then. Okay. Yeah. The book I picked was, um, I picked uh, Somewhere in Time. Oh, geez. It was really odd because I thought all the girls would read it. The guys read it. None of the girls read it. I think Shelly might have. And uh, and I, I had this vision because I used to watch the movie, and I didn't realize until I watched the movie again how dated the movie really oh, was. Yeah. That heavy music is yeah. in there and stuff. But um, I mean, it's, it's done on Mackinac Island, which is really cool. That was the cool yeah. part. Yeah, the only time they let a car on Mackinac Island. Right. And it was um, also, you know, um, early um, Jane Seymour when she was extremely gorgeous. She's just gorgeous now, but she was extremely gorgeous back then. Yeah, but, Jane uh, Seymour. Yeah, that was after um, that was after her James Bond stint. Yeah, but but uh, yeah. oh yeah, that's right. But um, uh, Chris Christopher Reeves, I mean, he just he he did Superman very well, but that was about it. <laughs> he wasn't an actor. He's yeah. Christopher Reeve, poor guy. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't an actor. But well, wasn't he a soap opera star or something first, or am I wrong on that? For what was Christopher Reeve? Did he start out in soap operas? I don't know. I don't know. You All know, I remember Christopher Reeves was when he started as Superman. So we we had a discussion lately on this on almost the same topic, but Vin Diesel, right? Yeah. Now, I like Vin Diesel in different movies, but he's very specific. Yeah. You know, he's in all the Fast and Furious movies. He does good. He was in an uh, early role of his was in Saving Private Ryan, but then he did the Riddick movies and stuff. Yeah. But if you see him in some kind of love scene, it's very awkward. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. So then we started talking about Paul Walker. And Paul Walker, you know, God rest his soul, um, he did real great in the the movies for the car movies, you know, the Fast and Furious line. But his other movies, he wasn't really that great of an actor. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, he just did that role. Look at, John, look at John Wayne. I mean, could John Wayne, I always got a kick out of him when he, he kissed the woman. I always felt sorry for the woman, man, when he... <laughs> What to give him a kiss? It was like, whoa. Okay, I know. John, you he, you're when not rustling your horse Khan? there. <laughs> remember, he played Genghis Khan in a movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, he's John Wayne. Just, well, it's you just know. like he played, he played, who did he play? It was, he played a Roman soldier in, in one of the biblical movies, like uh, Jesus of oh, Nazareth like, or something. Or the robe or something. Or yeah. something, yeah, something like that. And he had the one line in it. It was like, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> why? Yeah, yeah. Why? But John Wayne had star power. Yeah, you know he was so good at being John Wayne. It it was almost like it didn't matter. I said the curious thing with John Wayne was think of how many movies you actually ever saw him without his shirt on. I can only think of one. 
I, I never thought of that, uh, Doug, and that's kind of scary that you would. But anyway. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, when you're thinking of these things. But, you know, John Wayne, um, uh, because, you know, when he, he did a lot of his most popular movies, he was a lot older. Yeah. You know, I mean, when he did the movies in the 20s and 30s, that was almost in the silent era, you right. know. But, um, but he was in The Quiet Man, and they showed him in the boxing ring where he killed the guy. Oh, okay. You know, but, but, you know, like nowadays, you know, Sylvester Stallone, who is remarkably, thanks to modern science, you know, just his body is better than most people that are less than half his age. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Who knows what he's taken to do that? But yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I mean. You know, but. I still haven't watched the last Rambo too. I got to watch that. I still want to watch that. Terry doesn't, my wife does not like that at all. So she won't watch it with me, but I got to watch it. Terry's not big in the the Rambos. I remember the one where he goes to save the missionaries and then his buddy with the 50 caliber sniper rifle is just blowing people in (laughs) half. You know, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. But Sylvester Stallone is another one who, I like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll pair him with Bruce Willis. Sylvester Stallone does really good in certain movies. You know, but, but he's, he's found a lot of certain niches that he's good in. You know, he did good in the Rockies. He did good in the Rambos. Um, I liked him in Over the Top, even though that probably wasn't popular. He did good in the Creeds, too. And it's for the Creed yeah, 1. Oh, I haven't seen two yet. The Creed. Actually, they they were really good. Yeah. Well, then, um, but, you know, but if you saw him in, like, some of the more regular movies, you know, he wasn't really versatile. He played Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. That's, you know? Yeah. Now, Bruce Willis, even though he only plays a drunken, down-and-out cop, you know, character, um, it just because he's in a movie, it makes it better for some reason. It can be the worst movie in the world, but Bruce Willis is in it. So it's like, okay. Yeah, I agree. You know, I'm, I'm a big Bruce Willis fan. I yeah, got to agree with you on that. And I am, um, you know, from Pulp Fiction to oh. uh, the one where he was the water boat cop. You oh, know, see, with, I haven't uh, watched I haven't watched Death Death Wish yet. He redid Death Wish. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, I saw I saw Death Wish. I saw Broken. Um, or was it Glass, or was he in both? You know, where he was like a superhero? Yeah, yeah, broken, yeah. 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 But I, Bruce Willis, I loved Reds. I thought he did a great job in Reds. Yeah. Um, I loved him in the Sylvester Stallone Expendables. Expendable. I thought the, I thought the Expendables was awesome. I loved that, that, that series. Um, they were really good. They're supposed to do another one. Yeah. You, you remember um, True Grit? We were talking before about John Wayne. Yes. Now, True Grit, I just got to say, that was his his first, I think his only Oscar that he ever won. Yeah. And I think the reason, if you ever watched the original True Grit with John Wayne, it was because Glenn Campbell was such a bad actor that I think John Wayne looked just that much better. <laughs> yeah. Glenn, yeah. Yeah, Glenn was bad. I mean, I love Glenn Campbell, but he was not, he was no actor. No actor. Poor Glenn. Do you remember Norwood's Coming Home? Yeah. That was with him and Joe Namath. Yeah. I mean, there, there's that, a couple yeah. of top, top actors right there. <laughs> you remember, you remember the movie CC Ryder? Oh yeah. Yeah. I used, to, I used to watch that movie all the time as a kid. It was on like the Saturday afternoon movie or whatever. And I'd watch it. No problem. Nothing. I go to this dollar store. This was years ago. One time. And they used to have VHSs on sale for a buck. Right. Oh Yeah. <laughs> so you figure you buy them if they're no good, you throw them out. It's cheaper than renting a movie, right? Right. So they had CC Rider on there. Now I've only seen this movie on TV. Do you ever see the that version, the theater version? No, actually, right. I haven't. No. It's it's pretty. You know, I'm watching it with my daughter Sarah, and it's like, oh, 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 oh. You know? <laughs> it was pretty wild. Yeah. But. Well, it's just I like that. I had one. I had to rent the Easy Rider uh, um, again, you know, just because I'd never seen the uncut version, so I I got that one to watch, and it was like, you know, was, I think I got it at Goodwill or something for a buck or whatever it was. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Goldfinger for a buck on VHS at Goodwill, and I'm like, but there's even like, if I don't keep but, it or whatever, I, it was a quarter or something at the time because this was after they were really getting old, and it's like. I'll watch it. You know, I know I'm going to like it. Right. 
But if I want to get rid of it, I'll just donate it back. It's yeah. like a video store. Yeah, but- but Easy Rider, the the thing I was, I was saying about that is, I, you know, I, I wanted to see it again because it, the movie was so chopped up. I didn't understand half the stuff that was going on. I thought I, maybe I had to be, you know, totally stoned to be able to watch this movie. But yeah, so I, I got I got the video to watch, and I'm watching it, and it was this almost the exact same. I really didn't miss anything. <laughs> Yeah. I'm thinking, boy, well, that was, was really a crappy movie. <laughs> well, I um, do you like Quentin Tarantino at all? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so I watched um, one of his favorites that I have is Jackie Brown. Okay, yeah. With Pam Greer, right? Right. I watched it on TV. I don't know how many times. The first time I saw it, I think I borrowed it at, from the library. The first time I saw the uncut version, it was like. Wow, the language is just unbelievable in this movie because they dubbed it all out for television. Right. You know, there really isn't, I don't think there's any any nudity or anything in that movie at all. Most of his movies aren't. There, there isn't, you know. But, um, but it's funny how you see one on TV and like you say, you know, you're wondering if you're missing something and stuff. Sometimes they're exactly the same. They just dub everything out. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. Talking tunes, and it's time for our weekly installment of Dougie What's His Head, and it's time for movie talk. Well, you know the one, you know. the one quick Tarantino movies that uh, I didn't really like. I'm because I, I love Pulp Fiction. I, I um, a Dust to Dawn. I like that one. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, Tarantino movies I liked. This last one he did um, with uh, oh geez, the the two Brad Pitt. Yeah, Brad Pitt. That was okay. Yeah. I mean, it was all right. I didn't. It didn't really turn me on too much. But the ones that I really didn't like though was the Kill Bills. Those to me was just. <laughs> it was like, I don't know. Unless you like Uma Thurman, I guess you know, just kind of one of those things where if you just watch her shoot it, find out different ways to kill people. But it's like okay, yeah. whatever. I I think the one I really didn't like. I didn't like that much was the Hateful Eight. Now, see, I, I didn't. I didn't see that yeah. one so. I didn't, um, you know, Bruce Stern was in it and stuff, but I didn't, um, you know, I don't really have a desire to see that one again. Now, the last one he did, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. That other than it. the language, because lang- you know me, I don't like bad language, but um, other than that, I did really like that movie. I thought, um, you know, Quentin Tarantino. It was a nice twist on the movie, I guess, and a nice yeah. twist. And, and and I read into it something different than another guy read into it, you know, as far as the twist at the end, so. Oh, yeah. The, and, well, the end, you know, where he always is usually over the top, you know, when yeah. Brad Pitt takes out that girl and then the other guy uses the flamethrower. But, but I think some of Tarantino's movies, like um, Jackie Brown, uh, Django Unchained. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, these yeah. would have been these like Django Unchained. That would have been a great movie. Movie. I mean, when you when it's a Tarantino movie, you know that it's a, there's a twist. It's it's always, and that's what we like about him. You know, they're always exaggerated. Yeah, his movies. You know, but it, it was good writing. You know, and I really thought Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. If you look at the undertone, uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio, who's a good actor, um, I think. Um, you know, his character was just, he was getting old and he was finding out that, you know, his thing in Hollywood, his stardom days were done. You know what I mean? Where And yeah. Brad Pitt was just like, I don't care about anything. Give me a beer and blah, blah, blah. You know, the trailer he lived in and stuff. But yeah, but yeah, I liked, um, I liked, uh, Pulp Fiction, you know, I like the I, I like mostly the TV versions because they cut out a lot of the stuff on them. But um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I you think you I don't think like Tarantino the you don't, you don't like the gimp. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that part, you know. <laughs> but I like Bruce Willis's character. We're gonna invite the gimp to come up to the 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 camping trip with us and share oh, a room yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I'll tell you another movie I didn't really care for. I didn't think it was that good, but I thought the end was great. Uh, was um, Grindhouse Death Proof? Yeah, you did really switch the subject there real quick, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not we're not going to the gym. Uh, but the gym, that that whole that whole part was bizarre. 
<laughs> you know, I'm glad they cut that out in some movies. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, the Grindhouse Death Proof, I didn't think... Zed's that that dead. Huh? <laughs> that, no, the, that was one of Bruce Willis' lines. Zed's dead. You remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. I've I've seen that movie way too many times. That's for I sure. Know it. Yeah, I that, know you know it. another one. I you you did. I you know you mean to cut you short here, but another one you didn't bring up that was one of my favorites. Gruesome, but it, I I love it. It was the uh, Fargo, and actually the series. Oh, Fargo. Yeah, the series they have on now is actually pretty good too. The Fargo series, I think yeah. that's pretty good. And on Netflix, I, you don't get Netflix, right? No, I don't get Netflix. Okay, so I really can't talk about those. So, a lot of but good, I, uh, lot of good shows on Netflix. You know, but Fargo, um, the uh, who they plays on Shameful or something like that on Shameless, those, yeah. Uh, yeah, William Macy, great actor. Oh, awesome actor! Yeah, I mean, he just anything he's in, he makes better. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the whole the whole Shameless series. I mean he made that too. I've I've watched the 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 English version. I think it's on Hulu or somewhere. I think it's Hulu. I watched the uh, the uh, English version of Shameless. You know the original version. Yeah. And the only it's 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 pretty good. It's it's actually really good. It just really hard. <laughs> it's the real gutter, guttural um, English accents. Yeah, and it's hard. really hard for me to to get it all. I can't speak English, let alone you know the English accent. Yeah, the you know. Queen's English. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a little hard for me to follow sometimes, but it's pretty good too. So yeah, but, but he's he's a uh, he's a good actor. He he's you know a lot of times he's in a character role, but you know he was great in Wild Hogs. He was great in Sahara, which Wild I Hogs he was hilarious in. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't know, yeah. I was and speaking of now there you go into John you know John Travolta and uh, Robin Williams and uh, oh geez now I, now I'm gonna go blank on the name of the movie oh my anyway <laughs> oh, the one where he's got the tattoo of Fremont no no there's one where he where they they get a they have a adopt a son or has a son or something that he didn't know he had and Robin Williams does and John Travolta helps him raise it and they're business partners and. Yeah, I can't think of the name of it. I can't think of it. Anyway, I know that one that one when the the one scene and you know, James Seymour's in it too. Had the one scene where he takes the the kids mess around with the pills and they take the wrong pills, and he's he's in a uh, at at a party and he looks like the Joker because he can't stop smiling and it's at a oh. funeral. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just just some good stuff, man. I just great. There's some great movies out there. A lot there of crap. Is. You got to go through a lot of crap to find the good ones. But yeah, a lot of great but, stuff out there. The one thing about Tarantino's Death Proof, though, was in the end of that, where the white challenger is getting chased by the black charger. Where uh, I, I uh, never seen it. So. Oh, it's, you never saw it. It's amazing that the, you, you know we talked about that twenty minutes ago, and you're already back to it again. But okay, I know. I, I just got to get it out. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the best car chase scenes in a movie. You should you should Google it. It's the Vanishing Vanishing Point Challenger, and it's the act, it's not the actual Challenger from the movie. But these girls are going to check it out because the girl always wanted one. And then, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Married Goldie Hawn. Oh, uh, Jeff, um, not Jeff Bridges. Um, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah, he's the bad guy, and he's going after him in this black charger. Okay. And and that uh, the chase scene was great. I didn't think the movie was that great, but the chase scene was great. I got to ask you, you said something about Vanishing Point. Um, do you remember uh, the first movie that you went to with your mom that uh, found out you there was a nude there was a nude scene in it? Um. That I went to with my parents. With your yeah, with your mother or something, yeah. I do vaguely, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure of the movie. I want to say, but I don't know because I don't know if this movie had a bad scene in it. Was, uh, was it Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry? Oh, see, I don't remember that one. Um, that was, um, that was where I think they were stealing something. And in the end, their car hits a train. Oh. But I just remember being in the theater and uh and seeing a scene it wasn't it it would just showed like wasn't a rear appropriate. end <laughs> yeah it just really it just showed a rear end but 
Um, well, mine, mine was mine was Vanishing Point. I've never seen that movie since then. It was with uh, St- Steve McQueen, and he's driving up on this uh, motorcycle. At least I think it was from Steve McQueen. I mean, it was a lot of years ago. And he's driving up on a motorcycle, and there's a girl on the back of the motorcycle, and she's topless. And I'm with my mom. And that was very uncomfortable for me when I was a kid. So I just... Oh, just... that was Anthony Newley. Was it? In Vanishing Point. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a scene in that movie where a girl does drive up on a motorcycle. Yeah, he's going through the desert trying to find gas. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, because there's another yeah. there's another movie called Vanishing Point, I think too. It's a whole different type movie, though. But, there could be. Yeah, I. I um, this was like I back my, in the se- early seventies. So, do you remember the one um, Tulane Blacktop with Warren Oates? <sighs> Probably. And no. uh, James Taylor. Um, I had my daughter buy me that for my birthday, and um, that was an interesting movie. It's about two cars racing cross country, and Warren Oates is this mysterious guy in a brand new GTO, and I think it was Brian Love, the drummer from the Beach Boys, okay. and James Taylor, yeah, were in an old '56 Chevy, and they're they're racing each other across the thing. Right. Yeah, a lot of those movies back then were pretty interesting. Brian Even Love, though, who's Brian Love? I mean, there's Brian Wilson and there's Mike Love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who was the one who was the drummer who died? That was in that was Brian Wilson's brother, whatever his first name was, Wilson. But okay, I think that's who it was. I think it was the drummer. Okay, because I think he died. Didn't he marry the guy's daughter? I don't know. <laughs> he he lost did. me there. Hey, I got to ask you the um, uh, Mason County Line. Do you know that movie? Yes. Have you seen it? Yes. Is it any good? Mason County Line, isn't that with Jeff Robodine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's it was his first movie he directed. Yeah, I think it was okay, probably. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just checking. I've never seen it, but I, I remember that Jeff Robodine was the one that directed that movie. So I was he just kind of. He started in it. Uh, he was the cop, or he yeah, was in the it. Cop. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I was thinking about watching that one too, but I haven't, I haven't got to it yet. So it's like yeah, on my a, list. That's, that's an oldie, uh, oldie, but a goodie. All righty. All right, Dougie. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Dougie, what's his head? <laughs>